so I'd like you to start today by just looking at this starter activity. Look at the child on the right, who we have labelled less able, and the child on the left who is bright. And I just want you to jot down what would be the effects of labelling, of teachers labelling the following students. OK, so title for today's lesson, what are the effects of labelling? And we're going to look today at the various ways teachers communicate their labels, because obviously they don't say, oi, you over there, lazy one. But how do teachers get across to students how they have labelled them? Because unfortunately, it does happen. So a little bit of a recap, hopefully you can remember from last time. Press pause and just jot down everything you can remember about what Hargreaves and Becca say about labelling. So there's your recap slide from last time. So if you remember, David Hargreaves looked at how teachers make labels of students, what they base those labels on. And he found that teachers make quick judgments of students based around characteristics like their appearance, whether they follow the rules, are enthusiastic, etc. And he said these labels are not based on academic ability. Howard Becker, on the other hand, also studied how teachers make their labels and he looked at the sorts of characteristics these labels are based on. And he said also that teachers build up an image of students in a short space of time, but also slightly differently, they already have ideas about what the ideal pupil is. And they say the ideal pupil behaves well, is ready to learn and has the right means to learn. In other words, the equipment. And this study shows that children are judged even before their teacher gets to know them. So that was just a recap on what you've looked at in previous lessons. On the next four slides, you'll see information about the effects of labelling split into four sections. Self-fulfilling prophecy, setting and banding, teacher expectations and anti-school subcultures. You can see them there in the different colours. Underneath each one, there are questions for you to answer. So, for example, if we take self-fulfilling prophecy, we need you to jot down from looking at the information. What does it mean? Give an example of it and explain how labels are communicated. So use the information on the next few sheets and jot down the answers to those questions. So if we look first at self-fulfilling prophecy, essentially what this means is that a child is labelled by the teacher, they accept the label, they start to live up to it. So essentially they start believing the label is true. So for example, a child that labelled is naughty might start actually behaving in a naughty way or a lazy child might not put effort into their work. And the teacher gets this across by the comments that they make, but even their facial expressions and their tone of voice, etc, etc. And this affects the students and changes how they start thinking about themselves. Hence, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Teacher expectations we've talked about before. Essentially, the idea behind this is that uh, Stephen Ball is saying that those children in the top sets are treated differently from children in lower sets because the teachers expect less from their lower set children. Read the information, that'll tell you a little bit more. So setting and banding, the idea of this is that students are split into ability groups. We do it at our school in maths and in science. And the idea is that the students themselves start thinking to themselves, oh, I'm top set, I can absolutely do this, I'm really good. Or maybe I'm in one of the lower sets, I'm not very good at this, and they might switch off. So in some ways, in this, the students are labelling themselves. And finally, anti-school subcultures. So this is the idea that students in lower sets or in certain groups are less likely to follow the goals of the school. So in other words, they might be a bit rejected by the teachers. They feel how they've been labelled. They might feel rejected by the school. They're not getting respected by being clever and doing well. So they find a different way to gain respect and they form an anti-school subculture, a group within the main group who actually follow almost anti-school rules and anti-school norms. So again, back to your original table, fill these bits in here and then have a think about at the bottom. Why do you think this is more likely to cause the working class to underachieve? Why do you think that is likely to affect them more? 
finally, you're going to finish today's lesson with a little bit of an assessment. This is an outline question, a five mark question. You only get them in paper two of the sociology course. And essentially, you just need to give basic information. You're not going into lots of detail. Five marks outline how labelling leads to underachievement in schools. So if you look at the mark criteria there, you need at the top marks four to five detailed knowledge of two ways labelling affects achievement. Make sure you're using the sociology language. So use words like self-fulfilling prophecy, like anti-school subcultures. Maybe mention a particular sociologist. So mention Stephen Ball and setting, etc, etc. Have a little go. Good luck.